Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today we've got new NVIDIA GPUs, Intel's upcoming 10,700K gets 5.3 gigahertz, and Intel's getting double their performance? Maybe. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first Drop made items. So head to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, it looks like Nvidia is finally starting to sweat under the pressure of Intel and AMD's newest iGPU offerings. And that makes sense. Intel's current Iris Plus graphics made a decent leap forward, and their XE graphics in Tiger Lake are expected to do the same. Then there's AMD, with their newest Ryzen 4000 APUs running 7 nanometer Vega. This brings us to our first story. Nvidia is gearing up to release a couple new discrete mobile GPUs as outlets have already been able to get their hands on them and run some tests. The new GPUs are the MX350 and MX330. Unfortunately, they're still Pascal based, but Notebook Check does claim the company is planning a Turing based upgrade. In the meantime, we have these two new GPUs. The MX330 is a 25 watt part that comes with 384 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1531 MHz, and a boost of 1594. The MX350 is a 25 watt part that comes with a nice 640 cores and a base clock of 1354 with a boost of 1468 MHz. When it comes to performance, the MX330 gets a pretty huge boost over the MX230 and is just over the MX250 in time spy, while the MX350 gets around a 15% boost over the 250. And most of this seems true across other benchmarks. What's nearly unbelievable is that AMD's leaked review that I went over on the Ryzen 4500U isn't too far off of the MX330, and that has two less CUs as the 4800U. If we do a bit of math and everything scaled perfectly, the 4800U should be around 33% faster than the 4500U, and the MX330 is 41% faster, so this may not be enough of an upgrade to fully change things. I guess time will tell. Next up for today, we have our first big leak on Intel's upcoming i7-10700K. It was originally found and shared by Tom Apisak, and as you can see, it's of a 3D Mark benchmark for the 10700K. Unfortunately, he didn't share the actual score, but the big thing here is that the upcoming CPU is an 8-core, 16-thread part that looks to have a boost clock of 5.3 GHz. Now, that's obviously a single-core boost, but it's still fairly impressive. Basically, Intel may have found a way to squeeze just a bit more out of their 14 nanometer process, or they're essentially using some heavily bent chips. Either way, that's definitely a nice upgrade over the 9000 series, but whether it'll be enough to topple Ryzen is pretty doubtful. At least when it comes to games though, it should do really well. Lastly for today, I wanted to discuss a benchmark that's going around that, at least to me, doesn't make any sense at all, or at least the way it's being portrayed. The benchmark is from Geekbench, and it's on an upcoming 10 nanometer server chip. Now, aside from the fact that Geekbench is already not that great of a performance metric, this benchmark is weird. But the reason I wanted to go over it is because one, it would be amazing if true, but also to point out some issues I have for those who do believe it. Either way, let's go over it. First up, as you can see, it's a 12 core, 24 thread CPU that, given the amount of memory, is definitely a server chip. It also comes with some pretty low frequencies, but it's clearly an engineering sample, so that makes sense. Plus, Geekbench could have easily misread it, but when we compare it to Intel's current Gen 12 core 24 thread Xeon, the single core performance is clearly not good. Now, this is where things get interesting. When we look at the multi core performance, the new chip is literally double the performance of last gen, even at the much lower clocks. Of course, that makes no sense, at least until we go down here, where it shows this is two processors. With that said, WCCF Tech's author insists that Geekbench looks at the Windows kernel to get core counts, so it would say 24 cores if it was two 12 core parts. He thinks that it's actually due to it being a virtualized hypervisor. The issue I have is that given the lower clocks, it would have to be due to an IPC increase, but that should have raised the single core performance as well. That, or Intel is doing some weird things in their upcoming processors. And here's the thing, I'm not calling out WCCF Tech or anyone for that matter, he could be right. I just wanted to point out something odd that I found about it. With that said, if this is correct, Intel's next-gen Xeon chips are set to be incredible, which would mean their desktop parts would follow suit. 
The issue is that so far, Ice Lake hasn't exactly been that impressive. Fingers crossed though. So while that does it for today, do you think Intel's upcoming CPUs can get double the performance or what's going on here? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.